All right, 10.2 nuclear equations. Now, in, a nu in nuclear decay, an alpha particle, beta particle, positron, or gamma ray is emitted. And these we saw a little bit about in 10.1, and here in 10.2 we're going to learn quite a bit more about them. Now, when these are emitted, this decay is written in the form of a nuclear equation. Okay, it's a little bit different than a chemical equation, except we're still going to have to balance them. In this case, instead of balancing like the number of carbons on each side, we're balancing what mass numbers and atomic numbers add up to. So in a nuclear equation, mass numbers and atomic numbers must balance. Okay, so the first type we're going to look at is alpha decay. And here are a couple of tables, and the reference table is very important. Table O and table N, I think it is. Now, at table N, we saw how different radioactive, unstable elements decay and their decay mode. So here we have uranium-238, and it has alpha decay. And that means it's going to change by releasing an alpha particle. Okay, So alpha decay is a transmutation, right? we learned that word in the last lesson, whereby an unstable nucleus emits alpha particles. Remember, emit means to give off. Alpha particles are products in the reaction, and the nucleus becomes smaller with a bit less positive charge. Remember, products on a reaction go on the right side of the arrow. So alpha decay can be summarized as follows. The atomic number is going to decrease by 2 because the number of protons decreases by 2. And the mass decreases by 4 because the number of neutrons decrease by 2. And remember that the atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if there's two protons and two neutrons, the mass decreases by four. Let's do an example. So here we have uranium-238. Now the atomic number for uranium is 92. Okay, And the mass of uranium-238 is 238. So we're going to have something The mass number is going to go down by 4, 2, 3, 4. The atomic number is going to go by 2, 90, plus that alpha particle. So we can write alpha, 4, 2. Okay? Now to figure out what this is, it's very simple. All you have to do is you go to your reference table. Right, so when we look up element 90 on the reference table, we see that it's thorium. So uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay, loses a mass of 4 to 234, loses 2 protons, so the atomic number turns into 90, and our alpha particle. Now the way we double check this is we just add up the numbers. So on the right side we have 234 4 plus 4, which is 238, and we have 90 plus 2, which is 92. And that simply has to equal what we have here on the left. And it does, so we know we did it correctly. All right, so the next type we're going to talk about is beta decay. Now, in beta decay, a beta particle is emitted, produced, as a result of nuclear disintegration. Something said to undergo beta decay is called a beta emitter. So carbon-14 is a beta emitter. And it can be summarized as follows. And here, the atomic number increases by 1 because the number of protons increases by 1. But the mass number stays the same. The number of neutrons decreases by 1. Okay, the way I like to think of it is this way. Imagine you took a proton plus an electron and jammed them together, what would they make? Well, since electron has pretty much no mass, the mass size will be the same. So it'll still be the size of a proton. Well, except for the fact that I can't draw. It'll still be the size of a proton. But when we put these opposites together, they neutralize each other. 
So basically, when you take a proton plus an electron, you end up with a neutron. Well, the same way, if we can take a neutron and pull out a negative charge, what's left is a proton. So beta decay is basically a neutron turning into a proton by giving off an electron. So now here we look at carbon-14, okay? The atomic number increases by one, so six is gonna turn into seven, but the mass stays the same, so the mass stays 14. So we simply go to our reference table, periodic table, and we see that element number seven is nitrogen. And it gives off that beta particle. So when we look here, the beta particle is kind of like a negative one. So seven minus one is six. 14 plus zero is 14, and we are balanced. All right, so others we're not going to see quite as much, but we've got to talk about it quickly. Positron emission occurs when a positron is produced during the conversion of a proton to a neutron. So imagine now we take a neutron and release a positive charge with no mass. Oops, sorry. Imagine we take a proton and we release just the positive charge with no mass. That's what a positron is. We have a positive charge plus a neutron. When you put these together, it would make a proton. When you pull the positive charge out from a proton, you get that positive charge and a neutron. And we look you know, on table and we can see an example of a positron emitter, like iron 53. So with this, the atomic number decreases by one because the number of protons decrease by one. Just like beta emission, the mass stays the same. So if you look at an example here, iron 53, okay, the atomic number decreases by one, so we get a 25. The mass stays the same, 53. So we'll have element number 25. And our positron. And element 25 is manganese. So iron degrades, iron 53 degrades to manganese 53. All right, gamma emission, all right, as we said in the last lesson, the highly penetrating type of nuclear radiation, similar to x-rays and light. They have no mass and no charge, they're just energy, and they are the most destructive form of nuclear radiation. Uh -huh. All right, question time. Very simple. Know them, two of you are going to be the lucky winners of a quiz tomorrow. All right, that takes us to the end, and I will see you guys in school.